So while it's been a while since I've done a disappointing products video, in fact, it's really been kind of a long while, I did do a makeup declutter not that long ago. I'll link it up here for you. But I am just in this constant recursive process of editing my life. Like it still hasn't gotten old. I've been on this kick for strongly about the last year or year and a half. I've been keeping a list of some disappointing products, products that underwhelmed me, products I regret buying, Less products I regret buying because if I really dislike something, I have no qualms returning it. So I actually did make a list of a few things that I had returned within the last couple of months to both Ulta and Sephora. So I'm going to mention them as well. But for this video, I had collected everything in this bag. There's really no reason for me to show you this bag except that I kind of like the little logo stamp on it. It's empty because everything is emptied out in front of me. I kind of created two piles. So things that are not really disappointing products, they're just kind of either very old, almost used up, gone bad, kind of part of a, another round of decluttering. And then I have a larger pile of things that I am disappointed in and I will sort of elaborate on why and just share my thoughts. So let's start with the things that I'm just kind of clearing out, it's time to get rid of. First thing is a makeup brush. This is a very old MAC 217 brush. It's sort of disfigured at this point. I recently re decided to replace it with a Hakuhodo J5523, which I showed in my recent video, Mercedes Shops. And it's just time to get rid of this. It's scratchy, no good anymore, needed to be replaced. And I am happy to report that I am immensely loving the Hakuhodo brush. In fact, it's made me realize how long I had kind of kept this past its prime. It just is all splayed out and no good. So next are two lip products, both from Bite. And again, it's, I love the formula of Bite. These colors just didn't work for me. So I think I'm going to probably, I guess, try and give them to my sister. The first is the color Fig from the Best Bite Rewind set. I'll swatch it for you. I really kind of wanted it to work for me and I just, every time I tried to wear it, I did not like the color on me at all. It's too, like, I don't know. Maybe it's that it's too warm of a pink for me. I just really disliked the way that it looked on me, even layered with other stuff. So I am getting rid of that. Everything else in that little mini set I have really liked though. And then the other thing is the matte lip crayon in the color Glossé. Love the matte lip crayons by Bite, but this color, again, you have no idea how much I wanted this color to work for me. This is like so on trend, I guess. Is this color still on trend? I'm kind of waiting for these colors to go away, to be honest. Like the really, really kind of like vampiric looking muted gray cast lips that make you look sort of like corpse-like. They just, it doesn't work on me. I can't get behind it. I guess this could have gone in just like a standard empty products video, but it's not entirely done. So I thought I'd put it in here. It's the Zoya base coat, which you can see I used about two thirds. It just became unusable. It became that sort of like gloopy texture. I suppose I could have gotten some kind of thinner, like a nail varnish thinner, but I just was kind of over it to be honest. It worked fine. I kind of got in my head that I wanted to replace my top coat and base coat with an all-in-one product, the Lauren B. Beauty dual base and top coat. I'm happy to report that that works very, very well as a base coat, so it's taken care of this. However, I do not like it one bit as a top coat. So I guess that's kind of like a disappointing product. They market it as a base and top coat. It doesn't give like the beautiful kind of like so look at my, I literally just did my nails. So I want you to see them, how like sort of shiny and glass-like they look. This is with the Shisui top coat, which I am so sad. That company folded and I don't think is making nail polish anymore, but their awesome top coat is truly awesome. And I'm trying to find something to replace it. I don't want to go to, back to Sashvit. That's what I was using prior. But the Shisui Top Coat in Awesome gives that really just like super shiny, amazing finish to nails that I like that the Lauren B Beauty product doesn't do. So I feel like it's kind of a misnomer to call it a dual base and top coat. In fact, I feel like it makes the top coat look 
like shit to be honest it makes the nails look almost kind of like dull and I don't know didn't like it at all so I'm actually thinking of trying the Smith and Cult top coat next which I've heard good things about but if you have a recommendation for a very very shiny top coat like Shisui Awesome or Sesh Viet, please tell me. <laughs> okay, these next couple products I really liked and got a ton of use out of. They're just really old. This is the Gressa Lip Boost in Bare. You can see I made a pretty sizable dent, although alas, there's still tons and tons of product in here. It's just old and very dried out, probably three years old. This was like the first generation of the Lip Boosts. I was like on the Gressa train when she was first first out there and I sort of have fallen away from the brand to be honest but really loved this as a cream blush on me the undertone was just really really nice on my skin which as you will learn later in the video is a very big issue for me blush colors it's, yes it's just not pigmented really and quite dried out at this point but that's bare I don't know if the formula has changed if it's still the same but I really really liked this as a cream blush. Okay, so this is my first RMS product to kick the bucket, so to speak. It is the first RMS product I ever bought. I actually, I don't know if it's the first. I think I bought this and the Uncover Up in 22 at the same time, but one of my very, very first eco beauty purchases like three or four years ago, I think I like lose track of time but it's the living luminizer as you can tell it is not all the way done but I got really close to finishing this it just got to be like honestly kind of gross it still worked fine I just found myself not really wanting to reach for it because I didn't really like the texture it got kind of thick and I don't know it's very old so I'm not like that upset to be parting with it I am tempted to replace it exactly with another living luminizer which I probably will at some point but I think I am first going to make a diversion over to the Tata Harper illuminator the equivalent of this in Tata Harper I've just been curious about it for forever then one of my like old conventional makeup holdouts is done almost an empty as well and it's the mac fluid line in black track this was actually i think like my second jar of this i had gone through one or two this was the gel liner that i used when i was in like college in my mid-20s and doing makeup very different than i do it now this was a great product especially when i was wearing tons of fake lashes to cover up the seam i just think a black gel liner is a nice thing to have around. Comparable eco products to this, I know Jane Iredale does gel pots. I know Tarte does some gel pots. I don't really know how clean they are. And I don't know, I feel like there's probably other independent brands. Like I think Erin's Faces is a brand I've been hearing my friends like Techno Cupcake and Sam at Home talk about that might be a good option. You know, MAC is kind of a classic. I don't think I'll buy this again. I probably will opt to go for a black gel liner in a more eco brand. If you have recommendations, please tell me. I decided I wanted to part ways with my Honest Beauty Cream Foundation in Linen. I was really, really actually into this product like last year it was in like some favorites videos and in some makeup videos I did just kind of over it like I don't know if you'll be able to see but like look how kind of like funky and textured and weird the product got in there just kind of started feeling like it was a little too heavy I don't I'm just not into it I don't have much more of an explanation Let's see if you can see what it looks like on my hand right there I just I don't find myself reaching for it at all so kind of like why keep it around so I think I'm just gonna toss it I don't even think I could give this to anybody because it's all funky then I thought like quite long and hard about deciding to part ways with this because I sort of have like an emotional attachment to it I don't really know why but it's one of my Chanel blushes I actually have three and it's one of the Chanel Joux Contrast blushes in the shade Mocha and as you can see I got so much use out of this I don't know like I think I got this oh, I don't know, it's been a while seven years ago maybe I'm not even sure I'm not that worried about powder products I think that they obviously stay good longer than cream products but I also have a very bright pink called turbulent that has since been discontinued and reflex which is a beautiful peach 
Um, and is also, it was like limited edition and is now discontinued. I don't even know if Mocha, you can still get Mocha. If anyone used to be on Makeup Alley, everybody, this was like a cult favorite product on Makeup Alley in that community, the Chanel Jus Contrast Powder Blushes. I got a lot of use out of this, but when I've tried to wear it in the last like year or so, I just find that it oxidizes on my face and I don't like the way that it looks. This I will come to in just a minute with another powder blush that I purchased to try and replace this because what I'm really after for my cheeks is like a cool toned mauve plummy color, but everything that I go for in that family doesn't show up that way on my face. It will just show up warmer than I want it to, to be honest, I'm finding it hard to get a product to show up cool on my skin, which can anyone help me understand why? Because I'm quite like neutral airing towards cool to undertones. I'm just like kind of at a loss to be honest. So I think it's just time for me to get rid of this. I don't like the way it looks on me and I feel like we had a good run. Now we shall transition into discussing things that are more solidly disappointing products. I am not shy about talking about this stuff. I think that it's really important for us to talk about products we don't like. One of my biggest pet peeves about the blogger world is, and honestly, to be perfectly honest with you, the reason I don't follow very many bloggers is that everything they post is positive and I'm just, it's not interesting to me. <laughs> and I think that a lot of, this is like turning into a mini tirade. I do think a lot of bloggers, there are bound to be things they don't like, they just choose to not talk about them. I just, I mean, whatever, everyone has their prerogative. But so here I am to tell you about the things that I'm not really a fan of. Okay, so why don't I just pick up where I left off with talking about blush. So I recently did an Instagram post about this. It's the Hourglass Blush in Mood Exposure that I was really hoping would be like a plummy, sort of fall winter appropriate blush. It does not look so beautiful on my face. It looks almost like a pinky bronzer on me. So I'm disappointed. I actually, I feel sort of guilty because I am going to return this to Sephora. I had tried this blush when it very first came out, like two or three years ago, I bought it and I ended up returning it because I didn't like it then. And I decided to give it another try. I was chatting in the comments of one of my videos with somebody. Well, the way she described this blush and some other like cool toned purple makeup, I was like, I need to like try that again. Maybe I was just like in a moment of not knowing what was good for me, but yeah, it still doesn't work. And I, I feel bad returning it, but now I know for sure. Not disappointed in the formula, but disappointed I guess in the color and in my personal difficulty finding a blush that will show up cool and dark enough on me. The thing I'm thinking about now is perhaps the KR Weiss Cream Blush in Abundance, which I think is a very cool toned cream blush. I really did want something in a powder formulation. One more face product to mention. And I had shown this in, I think my December Mercedes shops, I had picked it up during like a flurry of beauty shopping I was doing in December. And I was so excited about it. And it's the RMS Cream Blush in the color Spell, the lip to cheek. It looks beautiful. What I'm finding is that there are things that I like more in idea and concept than in execution. But basically, this just doesn't show up on me. I, I don't, I mean, even swatched, it doesn't like look like much. I really have been trying to get it to work. At first I thought, there it is, swatched. At first I thought this might be a similar case of how I disliked the RMS Buriti bronzer for so long until, cause I had been like applying that product with my fingers and trying to blend it in and it was just like a hot mess. That product transformed for me when I learned how to apply it the right way for my skin to get it to show up. So basically with that, I dip a brush directly into the product and apply to my cheeks. And now that's like a ride or die for me. Tried to do that with this. I still don't really love the effect. The best way I can get this to work for me is laying down either the Well People Bio Bronzer or the Buriti Bronzer, and I'll do this over top, but alone, I don't like it on my lips. I don't like it. Uh, it's just kind of like a nothing color. And I don't know, I think it's just not meant for my coloring. So if I could return this, I probably would, or I would exchange it for RMS Modest, which has been on my wish list for forever and is like a beautiful salmony pink that actually would be a really nice equivalent of the Gressa Lip Boost in Bare for like a cream cheek color. Speaking of well people, 
I thought I would mention this. I have a small sample of the BioCorrect Concealer in the shade Light. Picked this up, this sample up at Folane in Boston. Um, I don't know, maybe a month or two ago. I had been so curious. It was sold out for a while in the shade Light, which is what I wanted. What I have come to know about this product is that it is extremely love-hate, and people either really, really love it, or it really doesn't work for them. I mean, I feel like that's the case for like every product out there. There's people that it works for and people that it doesn't. The sentiments around this seem particularly heightened for some reason, because I think some people it's been a total game changer for, and for me, I was just like, no. So so my main issue with this is that I just found it to be too thick. It's very um, sort of similar to what I remember the Christopher Drummond Now Hint Beauty concealer to be like, although I haven't tried it since it's become Hint Beauty, so I can't really comment. But there it is up there. I didn't like it under my eyes. It creased in an instant and more so than even like the RMS on cover up and I don't even wear that product under my eyes. But as a counterpoint, I'm currently trying the glossy stretch concealer under my eyes, which is quite emollient. Not as much as, I mean, they're not even really, it's not even really comparable to this, but that product, even though it is emollient, doesn't crease. So before trying the stretch concealer, I may have been more tempted to say, oh, like everything, once you develop like some fine lines under your eyes, everything's gonna settle in them. No, that's not the case, because I definitely have found formulas that don't crease so instantaneously. Something about this just doesn't work on me. I tried to also use it as sort of a spot treatment on my face or even as like light coverage, like where I get particularly red and it just looked heavy and cakey, even with a beauty blender. I think it was too thick to be using on the face. Just didn't work for me. Something about this doesn't mesh with me. So I highly recommend that if you are curious about it to try and get a sample it, from a website or an in-person boutique if you're fortunate to live in a place where there is an eco beauty boutique around because I just, it's one of those things that I think you really need to try before you actually do buy a full size of it. This is another face product that I think I'm going to be discarding and it's the Lily Lolo BB Cream. Now, this is not a bad product. I actually like it, but the reason it's a disappointing product is because there is no SPF in it. And for that reason, I'm trying to get a little bit out to show you. I have this in the shade uh, light. The reason that's an issue is that it just really is a drawback for me in terms of how much I'll use this. I mean, it's just, I always wear a sunscreen or a sunscreen product every single day. So unless I were to use something like the Untinted Suntegrity or the Carry Grand 365 or something before this, I wouldn't, and I wouldn't really do that because then that would be like too much moisture on my face. So I just really don't use this as much as I would have liked and it was not cheap. And at this point it's like a year or a year and a half old. Yeah, I'm pretty disappointed I bought this to be honest. I don't know, I think in my mind the SPF issue was like bracketed or I wasn't like considering it when I bought this because it's not like it advertises it as having sunscreen, but anyway. So, these will also probably be relatively polarizing, disappointing products. There are two things from Red Apple Lipstick. The first is the Lash Project Mascara. I, you know, might stand alone with this because when I have sort of talked about it, used it in videos, people in the comments have tended to say, oh, it really works for me, two coats, really nice. I had like moderate success with this as a first mascara for maybe the first couple of weeks of using it. And then I would like kind of resort to using it as like a weekend mascara or like if I felt like putting makeup on to go to the gym. <laughs> yes, I do that sometimes depending on my mental state. I would throw this on or just like, you know, Saturday running errands. And even then it got to this point where I was like, did I even just put anything on? It just, I love a dramatic lash. So unfortunately for the price, this just, to me is not worth it. It retails for $38. I just think that's a lot of money for not a lot of payoff for me personally. However, 
The pros to this are that the formula is extremely gentle and nourishing to the lashes. So if you are extremely, extremely sensitive around the eyes, want your lashes to be conditioned and you don't really need a mascara to change your life the way I do, then maybe you'd be willing to pay $38 for this. I was disappointed because I had heard a lot of people hyping this up and I just think I have very high expectations with lashes, I guess. And then the other Red Apple lipstick product that I wanted to mention is their exfoliating stick. This looks foul, but here you go. Now the reason this is a disappointing product is that I just think it's really unnecessary. It looks like that on the end. It kind of has a nice pepperminty smell. Um, I just found myself not reaching for this because I could do just as well taking a tissue, moistening it. Sorry, I know that's like a really gross word that bugs people but moistening a tissue and like exfoliating your lips with that, I do that pretty much every single morning. It did just as good of a job as this. And this is not, this retails for like in the $20 something around there and I just don't really think that it's like worth it. This was also a relatively new purchase that I'm disappointed I don't like and it's the Tammy Fender Purist Antibacterial Dry Hand Wash. I think I can't remember where I got this. Derm store maybe. I, I, it was a product I bought to tip my order to free shipping, but my first choice hand sanitizer is the Intelligent Nutrients hand sanitizer, which now I need to buy one of. So I cannot stand the smell of this. It makes me feel a little bit sick and it lingers, which bothers me. It says that it has cinnamon bark, clove, and thyme. I use a hand sanitizer like pretty much daily when I get into work because I've been on the subway or if I go out to lunch or to coffee shops, I'm like pretty, I like to do a spritz just cause like I live in a city and like everything is gross and grimy like all the time, right? The Intelligent Nutrients one made me so happy. It had like a light vanilla lemon scent that was just like super, super nice. And this, I don't know, it's like tea tree, cinnamon, something about it, it just like makes me feel a little nauseous and like to continue smelling it for hours after. I'm sure that if I liked the scent, I would be like all about this product. And unfortunately, I just don't. I don't know, I might try and give it to a friend but I'm going to be returning to my Intelligent Nutrients hand sanitizer. I still am very curious about more Tammy Fender products though. In fact, the Neroli, uh, it's like the antioxidant cream with Neroli is very high on my wish list. I'm getting rid of my Zabana or Zabana Essentials Shimmery Dry Glow Shampoo. This was actually in my empty products bag and I just fished it out because there's like most, it's mostly full. Um, I think this product is not good. Uh, it, I found it to be, it made my scalp feel like congested for lack of a better word. Now I know dry shampoos in general, the powdered ones, like they are sort of congesting your follicles. So I try and not use them like a ton, but maybe like once or twice a week, but there really is a difference between something like the One Love Organics dry shampoo or the other one that's currently in my rotation, the Captain Blankenship dry shampoo. They're just much more finely milled and like silken and I feel like they are effective but they don't feel so heavy in your scalp. Like with this, let's put aside the fact that it has like glitter in it, which I'm not a stripper and I'm not a tween, so I'm kind of all set having glitter in my hair and I'm not Adrian Maloof. As soon as I put this in my hair, I wanted to wash my hair. It made me feel uncomfortable. I just didn't like it. I did kind of like the smell, I remember. Kind of like a cocoa smell. Yeah, I can't, now I, all I can smell is the hand sanitizer now. But yeah, I just, I wouldn't recommend this dry shampoo. It wasn't for me. This is a relatively recent makeup edition. And if you watched my last Maquillage and Musings video, I demoed this and it is the By Terry Rouge Expert Click Stick in Orchid Alert. Now, the reason it's in this video is that, can you tell? I just indicated why. Every time I go to use this product, I am dissuaded because of the scent of it. It's right there. It's beautiful. We can all agree. It has the granniest of granny rose scents on the lips. Like I know a lot of By Terry makeup has that kind of rose scent profile, but I had never tried any By Terry lip products and it's just, it's kind of a deal breaker for me. I have never been able to wear this long enough to even discern how long it would linger on the lips, but 
I just am so turned off by the scent when I apply it that I just can't do it. When I've heard other people review these, I think that they've said that the scent doesn't really linger and everything else about the product is really, really nice. I just do not like the scent at all. So I have a couple of remaining things that I don't actually have in my possession, but that I will quickly mention as if this video wasn't already long enough. I had thought very long and hard before my Sephora VIB order about whether or not I wanted to spend $60 on a candle and I decided to do it because, you know, I'm a grown woman and I spend my money how I want. So I decided to get the Ellis Brooklyn candle in the scent Fable. I got it home, I burned it and I was like, this is not worth it. it the scent throw was minimal. It did have the scent that I remember, but it just was not, it wasn't what I wanted. They are a more like natural company in terms of the how they formulate their candles and body care products and perfumes. But I was like, I can't, no. So I returned it. However, I went and decided to pick up the body lotion. Now this is the opposite of a disappointing product. This is actually going to be in my January favorites video. I returned the candle and I picked up the excellent body milk in the scent Fable. <laughs> Words cannot describe how much I love this product. Stay tuned to January favorites to hear more, but <laughs> this has been like, kind of like a total life changer. I'm very, very in love with this. The candle, no, this, yes. Oh, one other thing I ended up returning to Sephora was the Captain Blankenship deodorant, the Lime and Vetiver one, also from that Sephora VIB order. I gave it a really fair test and it's it was weird as far as all natural deodorants go. I found it strange in that it was very oily and most all natural deodorants I've tried like Schmitz or Primal Pit Paste or I'm blanking, I feel like I've tried so many. They tend to be drier and like, yeah, just dry. The Captain Blankenship one almost felt like coconut oil, like hardened coconut oil. So it was solid, but as soon as you picked it up, it would get like oily and I just don't feel comfortable risking like it ruining like silk shirts that I wear or things like that. It just, I didn't really care for it. It was fine, I guess, as far as like odor control. I just didn't like how oily it was. So I guess back to Schmitz for me because that's the best one I've ever found, the Schmitz in the pot. And then the last thing I ended up returning to Ulta like two weeks ago was the Tarte Tartist Lash Adhesive. I had very, very high hopes for that. I love the concept of the applicator. It's like um, you pull it out and you brush it, you brush the adhesive on the lashes, uh, the fake lashes. It's formaldehyde free and dark tone and it didn't work for shiz. Like, first of all, I'm used to lash glues needing time to get tacky, like with Duo or the Eyelore, the glue that comes with Eyelore lashes that I use. If I use lashes, um, I'll use the Eyelore glue now. And even the one Eco eyelash adhesive I had used, the Georgie's, which I don't use now, that's been in like previous disappointing products videos because that product goes off so quickly and smells like a bad Band-Aid. And I just don't think it's worth like spending the money to be able to use it for like a month or two. The Tarte lash adhesive, you don't let get tacky. It dries super quickly, but it the hold is very crappy. I just found the edges of my lashes would pop up. It was difficult to use when I, conceptually it shouldn't have been. <laughs> and I just didn't think the formula was good. I was like loading it on and still not having a lot of luck. If you have an eyelash glue adhesive and you wanna let me know in the comments, I would be thankful. I don't wear them that often. That's why I'm just kind of like using the glue that comes with the lashes. It's not ideal, but well guys, that is it successfully managed to not get any swatches on me. Thank you so much for listening to me talk for an ungodly amount of time about beauty products, but it made me really happy. I like talking about products that I don't like. Like it's, it's fun for me, of course, to gush about products, but it's fun for me to like critically analyze products and kind of give like a full perspective. So I really hope you found this useful. Obviously it's just my opinion. I'm sure everything I mentioned here probably works for somebody out there, just not me. I'll list everything below. I'm not gonna link it because I don't really recommend it. So it's not like I'm gonna encourage you to go shop it, I guess. Um, but I will list it for reference. And I think that's all I have. I'm going to sign off. Hope you're having a great weekend and I'll see you guys really soon. Bye.